<laughs> Hello? Welcome to Salt and Light Canning. I'm Jessica. This is my kitchen. I'm happy that you're here. Today, we are making my daughter's very favorite thing that I can. Right? That's your favorite thing? Uh -huh. And I'm going to say the name wrong, but I'm doing my best for making Seneca. And my oven says it's ready. It's just got to sing to me. It's an oven. You know, I'm so blessed. I had this old stove for so, so long. It was a, a glass range and my wonderful husband, it got broken. And my wonderful husband went and searched and found a great deal on another stove. And since we had the uh, gas hookup still behind the oven, he was able to give me a propane uh, range and oven. And it's just such a blessing. I'm so thankful. But anyway, not the point of this video. Today we are making synagogue. And Senegon is a meat and vegetable soup with a tamarind uh, broth. And so to make that and to can it, I need to cut up our beef and get it kind of trimmed up. I don't want tons of fat. So I'm gonna cut up these roasts. And we are so blessed. Um, if you ever get the opportunity to buy your meat from a local rancher, I cannot recommend it enough. You get high quality and the flavor is completely different than anything you'll buy in the store. It's so much better. But also you get this security of knowing where your food came from. And to me, that's, that's huge. You know, I, I got to talk with Edith about how they, they raise their meat and what they do. And it gives me security and confidence for my family. So, highly recommend if you ever get the opportunity, because like, I really don't have the space to raise a cow, but she does. So if you ever get the opportunity to work with a local rancher to buy your beef, I highly recommend doing it. Like I've said before, I don't think we can ever go back. Anyway, we are also multitasking today. So I have another project I'm gonna do and I'm gonna try and bring you guys along because in my kitchen, Food preservation is not only about canning, so I want to get to show you some other things. Anyway, I'm going to get this meat all caught up into little bite-sized pieces, and I'll be back when we're doing something yeah. else. I have our meat all cut up and I trimmed off a bunch of the fat. So I'm going to put these in the oven probably like, I don't know, 10 minutes or so. And we're going to start chopping our vegetables. I have a big soup pot for canning because I don't see the point in small batch canning. Obviously, if you're just cooking for yourself or you're just cooking for you and like one other person, please do what you think you can get in, get through in like a year, maybe two years. I know that I made a pot this size last time and Hannah went through it in a couple months because that's how much she likes it. So look at how much food you eat, what type of food you eat, and then you can estimate how much you need to make for a year or two years. Um, I've said several times, I keep the food in my pantry on a three year rotation. So my canned food, I am perfectly comfortable with eating a jar that's been jarred in the jar for three years. 
If you're not, then obviously don't can the way that I do, okay? Please do what you feel safe and comfortable doing. Now, anytime I go and take a jar out of my pantry, I check the seal, I check the date, I look at what the contents of the jar. If anything looks off, or the seal doesn't seem quite right, or if I open it and it smells funny, you don't need it. I throw it away. Because to me, my family's safety is more important than whether or not, um, than the work or whatever I put into putting that food in the jar. And sometimes, you know, things happen. You can get a faulty lid, you can get a false seal, things happen. So check your canned goods and make sure that whatever you're canning and whatever you're doing for your family is still safe to eat. Um, I can tell you with pickled products, if we let them stay on the shelf like we didn't eat them right away, I would be perfectly comfortable eating them for as long as the lid stayed sealed. We don't really have that problem. <laughs> we go through our canned food in a reasonable amount of time. However, if there's something I can that we don't go through, number one, I probably am not going to make it again. Or number two, I won't make as much because obviously it's not something that we enjoy. Um, and that doesn't mean it doesn't taste good. It just means that it doesn't work for how we're cooking. And that's okay. So, let's get these vegetables chopped up and get them in the pot. veggies in here. I'm going to add the meat and then I'm going to see how much room I have for veggies. Um, our spinach is going to cook way down. So, and I didn't cook this through like I wouldn't serve meat that is this not done, but I wanted to get some of the fat cooked out. Just personal preference. You do not have to pre-cook your meat when you're making soup that you're canning. It will cook in the jar. Our pot's on the stove and I have water in it. We're gonna start the stove. Now our goal here is just to get it heated through. I'm not trying to cook everything, I just want it heated through. And remember, our spinach is going to cook down some, and so are our green beans a little bit. So, we'll get this mixed up. Now, what we're going to do is add our tamarind soup mix, or synagogue mix, or sour soup mix, or whatever kind of mix you call it. It's tamarind soup mix. With as much water as I put in here, I think I need at least four, maybe five. But we'll taste it and we'll see. If you are using a soup mix in canning, you're going to want to read the ingredients. Um, I make sure that there's nothing like sage, because sage really can make your food taste bitter. Um, make sure there's not like milk powder in it or cornstarch so if something wouldn't be like safe to can check your soup mix and make sure it's not in your soup mix because again we need to be about safety for me personally that does not mean that i have to follow a recipe to a tea but i am going to make sure that what i'm canning is on the list of things that are safe to can so here we go Our soup is heated through and we're going to start filling jars. Rule of thumb is we need to fill our jars about halfway. I usually do half to two thirds. I know that's not the guidelines, but that's what I do. Please do what makes you feel comfortable. 
but we're going to fill our jars about half to two thirds full of solids and the rest liquids. So here we go. And make sure you stir up like from the bottom to get some of everything in your scoop. Because we are pressure canning, we're going to fill to one inch of headspace. And for my house, I only ever can soup in pint jars. Please do what works for your house. I can tell you, Hannah can eat a whole jar of soup or more by herself every day because she really likes it. Now my vegetables are still raw. Everything's still raw. I just got it hot all the way through. Now wipe your rims really well. Make sure nothing is going to interfere with your seal. Then I line it up. You do not have to. I absolutely have to because it will make me nuts. You don't have to. is full and I have the appropriate amount of water in my canner. I also have a splash of white vinegar and we're gonna let this come up to temperature. We have to let our canner vent. Um, please follow the directions for your canner. If you don't have the same canner as me then your venting time might be different and the water you're supposed to have in here might be different. Things might be different. Please read your instruction manual. Okay? I'm going to let this vent. Venting is when a steady stream of steam is coming out of this little vent place. And when that starts to happen, I will set my timer for 10 minutes because that's what's appropriate for my canner. Then once it's finished venting, we'll put the weight on. I have to can things at 15 pounds of pressure for my altitude. I am following the directions from the National Center of Home Food Preservation and their Can Anything Soup. So 15 pounds of pressure for one hour. All soup has to be pressure canned. Even tomato soup, even just vegetable soup, all soup has to be pressure canned. Anything with meat in it has to be pressure canned. Please do what is safe for your family. No, I do not always follow a, a strict recipe, but I do follow guidelines to make sure what I'm doing is safe. Please make sure what you're doing is safe. So, so our timer has come off of pressure and I let some of the steam out and we just, do everything slow. Don't rush it. You, you would hate to lose a seal or, or have some, just don't rush it. I mean, why go through all of that with the intent of having jars of food on your shelf if you're going to do whatever you're going to do to make sure that, you know, just don't rush it. So we're going to take them out. And they float because, truthfully, our beans and stuff were mostly raw, but they'll settle down. And I already hear jars closing. And we had some soup with rice for dinner. 
What do you think, Hanno? Is it okay? Mm-hmm. That's good. And they're still bubbling and doing their thing, so there's no reason to rush getting anything out of the canner. Because legitimately, if you rush, your, your soup is going to evaporate right out of your jar, and you're not going to see it. And you're going to stress about what happened with your headspace. And it just really is that you were in too big of a hurry. I hope this blessed you. I hope it encouraged you. Don't be afraid to try. If there is soup or a meal that your family really enjoys eating, see if you can turn it into a canning recipe. Make your weeknight dinners simple. Make your children's lunches simple. Or maybe there's something you enjoy taking to work. Make it simple. Then you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to worry about refrigeration or freezer space. You just have good food that you and your family enjoy. Be so blessed. Know that you're loved. And be a blessing to someone else. We'll see you in the next video.